NFL is back. And I got you guys covered with the top picks for the Hall of Fame game. Yes, you did hear that correctly, the Hall of Fame game. And for those of you that don't know or haven't been following, I've been giving preseason DFS content, I think for the past five, six years now, and it is literally the best edge that we have in DFS. So make sure to be taking advantage of it, okay? Uh, looking at the Hall of Fame game, the common characteristics that we have seen in this game is that it is a sloppy game. You know, it's the first week of camp for the two teams. I'm just using last year as kind of a reference point. Uh, not a lot of total yards, you, you know, I guess 300 plus yards is kind of a lot, I guess, but we will see kind of sloppy fumbles lost. We'll see that sacks allowed five sacks, one sack. You know, that is what's going to occur is that there are going to be some turnovers. There's going to be some sacks, uh, maybe a defensive touchdown. It's just a sloppier game. Uh, kind of the golden rule in camp for football is that it's easier for the defense to be better, faster than the offense. And then last year as well, we did see that the kickers were pretty valuable as well. And considering that all the teams, both teams only have one kicker on their roster, I'm pretty sure this might be what the base build looks like. So it might just be us trying to find two players to fit into our flex spot. And that, I hate that. I really wish DraftKings would get away from like, especially for this game, because it is, it's just, you're taking the free score the free points in the defense and maybe just one kicker or so. Uh, but even if they get six points, that is going to be enough for profit. It's a very low scoring affair in uh, preseason DFS. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the preview for each team. I'm going to start with the Jets. So looking at the Jets, we do know that Zach Wilson is going to play. The question then becomes, how much playing time can we expect from the other players that are on this roster? And really, my expectation is going to be that maybe Zach Wilson gets a drive or two, uh, maybe gets... 10 or so passing attempts. If you guys think that's enough for him to score a touchdown, maybe that's up to you guys. I do expect him to start, but then they also have Tim Boyle, who Tim Boyle is a quality backup uh, quarterback. He was on the Packers formerly, so the New York Packers are kind of a thing right now is what it seems like, but you know, I kind of expect him to get 10 passing attempts. And then also, uh, Chris Stradler here is going to be everyone's favorite play, I would say. Um, the question is, is he going to get enough volume to warrant that? How much playing time will he get? I kind of expect Zach Wilson to draw Drives, Tim Boyle probably finish up the first half and then Strievler maybe gets the full second half. If that occurs with his rushing upside, that might be something we're interested in. Let's just take a peek at the game logs from last year because that can kind of tell us something as well. Uh, we look at game one last year for the Jets. Decent amount of passing attempts for Mike White, who ended up being the second string quarterback. And this is kind of what I think we'll see from Zach Wilson again as an FYI. I kind of feel like we'll see this spread out. And I remember getting lucky <laughs> with this uh, two touchdowns from Strievler last year because he was getting a lot of hype out of camp. He's a, he's a good rusher, okay? Uh, that's really what you'd be playing him for is the rushing upside. Uh, but, you know, 34 passing attempts, not too much in that game. Game two going to be more of the same. Actually, only two quarterbacks play in that game, and they only threw the ball 28 times. And then looking at the last game of the season, they actually did end up throwing the ball a lot, but still the max passing attempts was 17 for Mike White. Will Zach Wilson kind of take that role this preseason? Tough to say, really. Um, but I don't think they're worried about him getting injured or anything like that. We'll see. I do think it's worth calling out that uh, Shreveler was the highest scorer last year for the Jets in the preseason. Uh, average 10 points scored per game last year. Then the next best one, and this is further going to echo the fact that we should probably be on a kicker, is Greg Zerline, who had 4.7 points per game. In the Hall of Fame game, a game that's sloppy, we might be just looking at it. It's a bonus game for these teams. So we might just be looking at Greg Zerline, uh, DFS wide. And then just some other takeaways that I want to call out. Um, they were 17th. The Jets were in rushing attempts, but the issue with them is that they really spread out the wealth both in rushing attempts and also in targets. So it's going to be tough to say that we should really be on anyone for the Jets. Now, I do want to call out the one player that is really standing out that we should probably be on. It's Jason Brownlee here. You'll see him make a kind of a nice contested catch right here. One-handed grab. He's getting a lot of hype out of camp. Like it literally seems like every day he's making some sort of play that pops up and that play people are hyping up. Okay. He is on the roster bubble as well. So when we take a look at their depth chart, that's really what we want to be looking at is players that might be on the roster bubble that we know are going to get at least a half of football. And Brownlee is going to be that player that does probably get a decent amount of playing time, especially given the veterans that they have on their roster. Look at this. We got Garrett Wilson. He's probably not. He's not going to play. Alan Lazard, not going to play. Hardman, most likely not going to play. You got Corey Davis. Doesn't make sense for him to play. We got Randall Cobb. 
not going to play. Alex Erickson, a veteran, no sense in him playing that much. He's probably just going to be a special teams guy for them. So that really just leaves Malik Taylor, decent player. Once again, probably not going to get that much playing time. So that leaves a lot of playing time available for these receivers, just getting the veterans that they have on their squad. I guess it is worth pointing out that with Brees Hall still, you know, trying to get healthy. Tough to say which players we want to be looking at. Now, Zonovan Knight was listed as the RB2 in that offense, so maybe he's not going to play that much. Uh, Michael Carter, you don't really expect to play that much. Uh, maybe Israel, the rookie running back, maybe he gets a decent amount of playing time in this game. There are only four preseason games now, as opposed to five for the team that has to play in the Hall of Fame game. So it does make sense to get them some reps. So I could see him getting around seven total opportunities in this one. But with that being said, the player that we're probably looking at other than Zerline and the Jets defense would just be Brownlee. Okay, that's really it. So now let's go ahead and get into the uh, Brown side of the football. Their team that I think is going to be a little bit easier to predict which players that we should be on. So the nice thing about the Browns is that they're going to be a team that I think we can predict who are going to be the players that we want to be on. We did see that last year, and I think we're going to see that again this year. So last year, they were ninth in rushing attempts in the preseason, which is pretty awesome. And they also very much committed to two quarterbacks throughout the preseason. Typically, it's Joshua Dobbs, and then two games, it was Josh Rosen, and then the last game is Jacoby Brissett, which is also very nice because we were able to see Joshua Dobbs get over 10 passing attempts in every game and also had 20 plus passing attempts in two of the game. We also saw them have John Kelly, their running back, get over 10 rushing attempts in every preseason game. And then also Jerome Ford, the first two games really went off. He was someone that was heavily involved. So it is nice to see that there was consistency there. And also it was nice to see that they were committing to certain players. That leads to some predictability in preseason DFS. Now, what do we know so far for the Cleveland Browns in terms of playing time, which is already very nice to know. We know that they are going to be committing to two quarterbacks for this game. Dobbs and Deshaun Watson are going to sit, which means that Kellen Mund is going to be playing. Now, he is expected, I believe, to start and play the first half. We do know that Kellen Mund kind of sucked, okay? So I'm not too excited about him as a play. Honestly, that just gets me more excited about the Jets' defense, okay? Um, Maybe that just makes us want to play maybe more of the running backs, but I am very excited about DTR playing. Could be the UCLA fan of me coming out, but he is someone that is a Russian quarterback as well. While a lot of people might be trying to play uh, Chris Strelever there, uh, DTR might be the play that we could be ending up on a little bit more. Just he has rushing upside as well. We know for sure that he's going to be playing a full half, and we know that playing a full half in preseason DFS is huge. So I think he's going to be someone that I want to be looking at and probably the most. He's going to be going against, you know, back backups, college type players and whatnot. It wouldn't be shocking to see him end up with 30 rushing yards, maybe 60, 75 passing yards. And hopefully we get a touchdown in there as well. Uh, but all in all, I think he's someone that could give us around five, maybe six DFS points. And guys, that is actually a lot. Okay. I want to make that clear. With that being said, we do know that they typically do commit to some running backs as well. The question is, which ones should we be on? Okay. We know that Kareem Hunt is currently gone. So we are expecting that Jerome Ford is going to be the RB2 in this offense. So my question with that is, can we expect him to get any playing time in this game? If so, how much? That's my worry. I can see like a max of seven total touches, and that would come from him playing the first drive or two. That's it. I don't expect him to play that much because he is a valuable asset to them for their team. We don't expect Nick Chubb to play, although last year Josh Jacobs randomly played, uh, so you, you can never be too sure. But that really just leaves us with kind of some fun players in the backfield. Uh, Demetric Felton. OK, Felton is an interesting player because he is on the roster bubble, probably make it as a special teams based player. But he is someone that was tested out as a receiver last year and also a running back. He is a dynamic playmaker. It'll just be interesting to see if they commit to him at the running back position in this game. I kind of see that happening. Uh, he should get the first crack at it as well risk reward base play. He does have the opportunity to get a decent amount of receptions in this game, I would say as well. The player from last year's preseason that, you know, John Kelly's a good player. Um, he made me look really smart last year. It wouldn't be shocking to see him get a lot of playing time again in this one. It wouldn't be shocking to see him get 10 plus carries again in this game as well. I kind of expect him to have a decent amount of run. And so to me, it wouldn't be shocking to see him get that 10 plus carries again. I do think it's going to be those two, Felton and Kelly. We do know that Nate McClary 
was someone that really lit up for the Baltimore Ravens in terms of rushing attempts in the preseason previously as well. I don't really expect him to get that much work, although I, I kind of think it's going to be Felton, Kelly, first half, maybe a drive or two into the second half, and then it's going to be Nate here, and then it's going to be the rookie here as well, Hassan Hall. And honestly, I haven't seen any film on him. Actually, I'm just going to pause this video and watch some quick film on him, see if I like him at all. All right, I did just get done watching film. He does seem kind of like their type, I would say, in terms of running back, but nothing to go crazy with, obviously. So no, I think if we're playing running backs, it's going to be the first two, Felton and John Kelly. Now where it gets very interesting, it's trying to find which receivers to be on. The funny thing about last year, though, in terms of receiver production, it was kind of Javon Wims was the, the easiest one. And then it was very much kind of spread out. Now it was three targets, four targets, which is pretty decent, especially for the Hall of Fame game, if we can spot some plays that are going to get four or so targets. So let's just go ahead and break down maybe which players that we should be on for the Cleveland Browns. So I will say the biggest question we need answered is, is Elijah Moore going to play in this game? He is someone that has been getting a ton of hype. I would say he is like top 10 on the preseason hype list right now. Um, a, a lot of love. So I don't know if we can really expect him to play too much. I don't really expect DPJ to play that much. I think we're going to see a lot of Cedric Tillman, probably David Bell. Interested to see that Jalen Darden is currently questionable. Did not practice on Tuesday. He was actually going to be someone that was going to be on interesting there that just broke while i was recording this all right that actually makes another play very much a good play that's gonna be dalen baldwin he is kind of a lengthier type of player and so he is someone that maybe with some added opportunities added snap share can get us a couple of catches maybe get us five points or so that is a very interesting click. He's already someone that has been getting a decent amount of hype out of Browns camp, although it hasn't been Elijah Moore hype, been kind of a sneaky option that you could potentially be on. Then that being said, I don't really expect someone like Jakeem Grant to get much playing time. He's really, it seems like he's in there to compete for a special teams position with Demetri Felton and possibly Anthony Schwartz, who I'm actually very curious to see if he's going to be playing in this game. I expect him to. He was someone that got a ton of preseason hype last year uh and really the browns fans hyped him up a ton and he really didn't do anything with it uh so he's a good kind of playmaker it wouldn't be surprising to see him have a good hall of fame game it just seems like we'd be hoping for that to happen i would say schwartz would make more sense with a stack with mund whereas baldwin would make more sense with dtr and like if you're trying to do a stack maybe trying to get lucky with a touchdown that makes more sense to me because you're trying to target those players that are gonna be playing together but we will see they are kind of banged up okay if darden sits like that opens up some playing time for bell obviously the Tillman rookie receiver he's been getting a little bit of hype I'll probably play a decent amount of him as well but for the most part it seems like Tillman Baldwin and then maybe Schwartz you know not terrible there so it, it, it is kind of an easier week to figure out which players we should be on and I'm just going to recap that and then I'll be getting into some kind of sample builds for you guys already this one's decent though so for quarterback position I do think uh Strelieve <laughs> I keep butchering his name the Jets quarterback uh there he is something that I do think we want to be on just because of the rushing upside that he holds he could easily get a rushing touchdown on this game uh if there's going to be a Jets rushing touchdown I would say he's kind of favored to do that but the play that I want to be on the most is going to be DTR uh the rookie quarterback for the Browns he's going to be playing a full half and he's going to be playing in the second half now yes he's going to be playing with backups 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 okay but he's also going to be going against backups, backups, backups. Okay. And I actually like the Browns players a little bit better. Um, the issue with the Browns is that they might commit to the run a little bit more. That's fine. Okay. Um, and then Callum Mund as well. He's most likely going to play a full half as well. You can't ignore that. Definitely want to be on him a little bit, but if we're favoring one quarterback, it's going to be DTR. Uh, at the running back position, I don't know if I really want to mess around with the Jets running back situation right now. I am recording this on Tuesday evening afternoon. Um, if we get more information on maybe they're going to commit to one running back, then maybe we can adjust. But right now, I think I just want to be on the two Browns running backs that are kind of clear plays. John Kelly and Demetrik Felton are going to be those two plays. And then for receiver, the one Jets player that I feel like we can be on the most other than the defense and the kicker is going to be Brownlee just because he's been getting a lot of hype. You guys saw the clip. It does make sense. He is kind of standing out for the Browns. I probably want to be on Cedric Tillman a little bit, but also Baldwin, who has also been getting a decent amount of hype there as well. Uh, and simple. We do want to be on the defense. We do want to be on the kickers. It's just trying to figure out which ones we should be on. So the tough part is kind of figuring out a lineup approach. So if we're doing this, maybe we don't commit to both kickers um, and we're probably just flipping 
maybe Jets and Browns D. Um, in this situation, if I'm going DTR, then I probably want to go with Baldwin in one. Uh, so we toss him in there, uh, do another build then with Tillman. You know, what we're trying to do is get lucky with a touchdown, okay? And we can do this both ways. So obviously we, we like that. Um, we can easily flip this then if we're going with more of a Jets based build. Then we could easily go Jets quarterback there. We already have Brownlee in there, kind of comfortable with that. But obviously, then we just want to flip the captain spots there. So Browns in the flex and then Jets in the captain spot. And then maybe we even go with the Jets kicker. That's kind of the tough part is like we know which players to be on. It's just getting the different lineup uh, approaches there, scaling it correct. Okay. But it's going to be looking like something like this. I would say kind of a safe build. I think would be something along these lines. Like maybe you want to go with Kellen Mund instead of John Kelly, just because you know for sure Mund is going to be playing a full, full half. I don't mind that idea. And I probably would definitely switch these two, just more Browns players in this build. But like looking at this, probably going to be on the kickers. Feel pretty good about that. Okay. And I just want to double check, make sure that the Browns only had one kicker. So they do. Uh, K Dork, that could change before the game, just as an FYI, just double check that. But feel pretty comfortable that we're at least going to get one point. You know, if they score a touchdown, I uh, should be able to get like eight base points out of the kickers. Should be able to get around at least 10 total. Obviously, if they're in the captain spot for the defense, from the defense as well. And then we're just trying to get some upside, maybe four or five points from DTR. Uh, John Kelly, obviously, trying to get lucky with a touchdown, but you could easily go Mun there, maybe Brownlee as well for the hype purposes. But that is it. Make sure to give a like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed this coverage. Love talking pre season DFS. There's a lot of game theory. There's a lot of research that goes into it, but it's very much rewarding. So make sure to like and subscribe. Um, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Let's have a good slate. Happy to have football back. And as always, let's keep cashing.